Welcome to our show of Barkman Saturdays, and this week I decided to take a look at King Solomon's Mines by Burbank Animation Studios, based on, was it, H. Ryder Haggard's uh, 1886 novel about Alan Quartermain, African explorer, who's British, who is also the inspiration for characters like Indiana Jones. So this character is historically important, you know, as far as I'm concerned when it comes to me, I actually enjoy more. Is this a bad movie? Yes and no, I guess. On the plus side, it moves out a rather fast clip, so it's usually not boring because the pace, you know, never feels like it's slowing down a ton. You know, it doesn't feel needlessly slow to try and build up tension because they just want to move through things quickly. But that's partially because Burbank Animation Studios, you know, is taking an entire novel and trying to condense it down to about 50 minutes. And this is almost always one of the problems with Burbank Animation Studios when it tries to, you know, do their adaptations of long works. There's not enough time to hit a lot, some of the key moments, so they have to start trimming. Admittedly, this is a more accurate adaptation than some others, from what I've been told, because they keep certain characters in and don't replace them with female characters for love interests. So Captain Good's actually still in this. Um, but... At the same time, because this story moves at such a fast pace, like it's you know trying to rush the end as quickly as possible, the characterization for a lot of the characters just feels really weak. Um, so we don't really care that much about the characters. We're just being entertained by the fact you know stuff's happening, and some of that stuff you know isn't necessarily that entertaining either. Um, the villains are kind of a weakness in this one. They're meant to be more comedic and incompetent. Sort of like with the one character being uh, obviously German, but instead of saying eavesdrop, he says eavesdrip. A hundred times I told you, find a place where we can watch and eavesdrip. But here is so far away, we couldn't eavesdrip a cannon. So he gets some bad plays on words, or acting like a benevolent boss, only to be, you know... Absolutely one of the worst bosses ever. And you, Quig, a lucky chump, working for a fellow like I, who does it all the work, while you stand around on your fat feet doing nothing. The one of the things that stood out the most to me is the character design for some of the black characters. It just made me go, what were they thinking? I mean, I know this is an older film, and I probably shouldn't be surprised they went went this direction. But, you know, this is from, like, the 1980s. I was expecting more from them. I still had higher expectations than what, you know, they gave me. So, yeah, that, that really bugged me. As for the story, basically... Uh, a guy comes from England to meet Cormain because he wants to find his brother who went on a hunt for King Solomon's mines, you know, where his treasures were buried, supposedly, or at least some of them, in quite a substantial amount. And, of course, his brother uh, apparently got lost along the way at some point. In fact, he got captured by natives that, you know, just don't like outsiders. Though why they didn't kill him is anyone's guess, because Cormain's like, uh, looks, turns, learns he's been missing for, like, over a year or something, he's like, he's probably dead by now, man. Like, like if he didn't get killed by the wild animals... Sir Henry, I'm continuing to speak in this tone of voice because I don't want to alarm the deadly lizard which is standing approximately two inches from your left foot. The slightest unusual sound or action from either of us is sure to cause it to strike, and one bite would prove instantly fatal. Please don't think I'm trying to alarm you. Considering how unprepared he probably was, he probably got killed by, you know, natives that, you know, just don't like being visited by outsiders considering, you know, everything we've done to them. But they go on the mission anyway, because Cormain's like, well, if there's any hope of uh, even a tiny sliver he might still be alive, I guess we should go on this mission, you know, and see if we can find King Solomon's mines while we're at and become rich. Okay, he doesn't say that, but let's face it, you know they're going to acquire some treasure, you know, by the end of the journey. And along the way, they eventually, you know, meet a guy that was banished from his tribe, who's actually the rightful ruler. His uncle um, tried to dispose of him, but apparently uh, the people doing that, you know, weren't very good at their job. Sort of like when Scar relied on those hyenas to take care of Simba. He probably should have done it himself. 
at any rate, after you know they get captured by the by the tribe, and you know reveal the rightful ruler, you know he has to challenge his uncle to combat, you know mortal combat at that. By the ancient tradition of my people, mortal yeah. combat. To decide who should really be in charge now. And of course, after you know losing the fight for a bit, he comes back and wins. And he decides to spare his uncle and just banish him and tells him never to return. Because, you know, he doesn't want to be a killer, I guess. Um, but yeah, after that, you know, Cormain and friends get reunited with uh, the one guy's brother and go visit the mines. And almost get killed by uh, the uncle's advisor, uh, an old witch that, you know, just constantly says execute them all. Yeah, not not maybe the most useful of adv advisors. You know, seems very... Uh, Lacking in terms of giving options. <laughs> but she ends up uh, killing herself in an accident, trapping herself in the mines, sort of like King Solomon did to uh, his wife for her lack of faithfulness at the start of the film in the like three-minute opener before the credits. So, yeah. After that, the villains manage to steal uh, Captain Good's uh, air balloon where, he has the, where he's got the treasure. But then they manage to screw up, you know, flying away by breaking the air balloon. The treasure falls back down, and then we see Cormanio and friends back home with their uh, loot. I guess they carried it back. Or, or they made, their, uh, made the black people they hired carry the entire thing back. That must have been really heavy and painful, man. Considering it just looked like piles of gold, so yeah, I, I mean it's it's got its fun upsides, but at the same time, it, its weaknesses mean it's hard to really be super invested in any of the stuff that's happening. It's like I don't really care about these characters because I don't know enough about them to really get attached to them as a character. They feel more like caricatures, you know, like they're just two dimensional to really be all that invested in. I mean, I know it's a fifty minute film, but it's just like give me something, you know, to, to work with. Like, even seeing a character get, you know, royally pissed off at something bad happening to someone else would at least, you know, make them feel more established. Instead, it's just, like, very dry <laughs> at times. So, yeah. Uh, not my favorite work, but not one of Burbank's worst, by any means. Until next time, then. See ya. Prepare to release the rock so it may seal this cavern forever against all but those who know its secret. No!